If the alarm clock had not rung the next morning, Madeline would not have been able to wake up. Her face burned up when she recalled what she had said and done to Jeremy in her drunken state. Back in the office, Madeline could be seen working on her designs absent-mindedly. She could not get rid of Jeremy's shadow in her head. It had been 12 years. It would be impossible for her to let go of this profound love in just one day. She touched her flat stomach absent-mindedly. If possible, she wanted to give the child the perfect family. Ding. Suddenly, a notification from her phone snagged her back to reality. She glanced at it and saw that it was a text message. It was from Jeremy. Madeline's heart started beating unrhythmically. Her hands even started to tremble as she opened the message. The first thing Madeline saw was a photo. It was a photo of Madeline and Meredith. They had taken this picture when she was adopted by the Crawfords. In the photo, Meredith was wearing an expensive dress. The light was shining down on her beaming face, and she was like an untouched princess. She looked so elegant and exceptional. On the other hand, Madeline was wearing a grayish-white dress. She looked as lowly as an ugly duckling in a dark corner. Below the photo was Jeremy's message. When she saw the contents of it, the temperature of her fingertips plummeted. Madeline, look at Meredith and then look at yourself. How will a filthy and lowly woman like you ever meet the qualifications of being my wife? The words stabbed her eyes like a knife made from ice. They were so heart-wrenching and unpleasant to the eye. She recalled the summer 12 years ago. She could not handle the cruelness and resentment Jeremy had for her now. Jeremy, you once said that I was the kindest and cutest girl you've ever seen. You said that you'd take me as your bride so that you could be with me forever. But what's going on now? Madeline's heart was beating very fast. She knew she could not let this go. She immediately added on, Jeremy, I know you have your prejudices against me, but I'm pregnant now. Please give me a chance to love you and a chance for the child to have a complete family, okay? After Madeline sent the message, she felt anxious and nervous. Nevertheless, she was looking forward to his reply. She wondered if Jeremy would be happy if he knew she had his child. Would he also look forward to the birth of the child? Nevertheless, in the blink of an eye, her fantasies were crushed. Jeremy replied to her message with only two words, aborted. Madeline's felt as if her heart was being sliced open by a sharp tool. Before her pain could ease, Jeremy sent another message, Madeline, I'm warning you. Only Meredith has the right to give birth to my children. A shameless B asterisk TCH like you should just sign the divorce papers immediately and get the hell away from me. If you don't sign the papers, I'll kill that bastard child with my own hands. The blood in Madeline's body froze instantly. Those sharp words were filled with humiliation, and it was like he was trampling on her. At the same time, this bone-deep pain made Madeline come to the realization that this man was not worth it. He was not worthy for her to love so blindly. Ellipsis. Over on the other end, Meredith deleted all of the messages she had sent moments ago. Her hands were still sweating even after doing so. She was afraid that she would leave traces and that Jeremy would find out the truth. Two years prior, she had found Madeline's diary along with a bookmark when she was rummaging through the latter's room. Jeremy's signature was on the bookmark. The date stated it was 10 years ago. Thus, it was obvious that Madeline and Jeremy had met each other 10 years ago. Not to mention, they had a romantic agreement between them. However, back then, Madeline's name was not Madeline, and Jeremy did not recognize her as the little girl who made an agreement with him. With that, she managed to exploit the situation. The automatic glass door opened with a click, and Jeremy's tall build appeared at the door. Meredith was sitting on his desk, and her face changed immediately. She hurriedly got up and placed Jeremy's phone back in its place as if nothing had happened. Madeline returned to the empty villa and thought about the divorce papers as well as the reply Jeremy had given her. Her heart was hurting as if it had been sliced by a knife. She had not thought that Jeremy hated her so much. He was so heartless that he could tell her to abort the baby so easily. Madeline was afraid. If Jeremy really wanted to do it, what should she do? At this moment, noises came from the front door. Jeremy was back. He was standing upright and looked elegant. Madeline was surprised, but she felt even more nervous. She was scared that Jeremy would force her to abort the child. However, to her surprise, Jeremy neither mentioned the divorce nor the abortion. 
On the other hand, he reminded her to go back to Whitman Manor with him the coming day as his wife because it was his mother's 50th birthday. This surprised Madeline. Did this mean that he was trying to accept her? However, her extravagant hopes were crushed by him immediately. The man's eyes were cold and so were his words. Madeline, don't even think about me changing my mind about you. I'll never fall in love with a woman as shameless as you. His cruel words penetrated Madeline's heart like a sharp knife. Madeline felt that this was very amusing. She looked at Jeremy and there was a mischievous smile on her pristine face. I am cheap, that's why I'm tarnishing myself by chasing a man that will never love me. However, how can I compare to your darling with my level of cheapness? The man froze while he was removing his suit jacket. He turned around, and his handsome face was covered in a layer of icy wrath. Madeline, do you want to get beaten up? I'm telling you the truth. Jeremy, do you know why you slept with me three months ago? Madeline walked up to him, and her eyes were filled with confidence as she said, it was Meredith. She planned all of it, she had planned to sleep with you, but due to a freak combination of factors, she slept with another stranger instead. Now that she's pregnant, the child in her stomach might not be yours. After she said that, Jeremy's face turned terrifyingly dark. He reached out his hand and forcefully pulled Madeline toward him. Subsequently, his cold hand grabbed her slender neck, and every knuckle on his hand began exerting force. Madeline struggled to breathe as he choked her. Do you think I'd believe you? Do you think a shameless woman like you can be compared to Meredith? After Jeremy said that, he pushed Madeline away. When she could finally breathe, she did not have time to find her footing, so she stumbled backward and fell. Consequently, her stomach landed right on the corner of the bed. An excruciating pain washed all over her, and she was in so much pain that she started to sweat cold sweat. She clutched her stomach and begged for help from Jeremy who had his back toward her. Jeremy, I'm in pain. Jeremy stopped and glanced at Madeline on the ground coldly. Your acting is getting better and better. I wouldn't care about you even if something were to happen to you, let alone when you're fine. Nothing could hurt Madeline more than his words. She passed out quickly, and when she regained consciousness, it was the next day. She recalled what had happened before she passed out, and her pupils constricted. She touched her stomach frantically. The doctor on duty walked in at the same time. When she saw Madeline's face, she looked at her in disdain. Your child is safe for now. Madeline quivered. Her eyes were filled with fear. Doctor, what do you mean for now? It means that you have a tumor in your uterus, and it's malignant. So, you have to abort the child or your life will be in danger as well. Madeline was stunned. Her mind was completely blank. Maddie, Maddie. After some time, Madeline heard someone calling her name. She came back to her senses and saw a familiar face. It was her only best friend, Ava Long. Ava looked at Madeline who was extremely pale. She felt extremely angry and worried. Madeline, you're such a bad friend. Why didn't you tell me such big news? Madeline was confused. Ava, why are you here? You're one to say. You called me last night, but before you could finish talking, you passed out. Ava reached out her hand to touch Madeline's forehead as she spoke. Madeline, did you lose your memory? Of course, Madeline had not lost her memory. She remembered Jeremy choking her before leaving her the night prior. Consequently, she hid her stomach on the corner of the bed and was in so much pain that could not get up. Nevertheless, he just walked away without a care in the world. He even said those heartless things before he left. Her heart was sliced open, and the pain penetrated her bones. Ava turned around and sat on the bed. Her expression was serious. Where's Jeremy? He's your husband. You're hospitalized and he's nowhere to be seen. Madeline averted her gaze in guilt. Jeremy is busy. He's busy staying with his mistress, Meredith, huh? Ava hit the nail on the head. Madeline, you're so crazy about that man that you've become confused and disoriented. You're in this state, and you're still helping him. Madeline laughed at herself. It's all because I like him. I think you won't be able to like him for long. Ava's words were still straightforward. Did you hear what the doctor said just now? Madeline was stunned once again. Ava looked at her, and she felt a lump form in her heart. You can have another child in the future. Your life is more important. Madeline laughed at herself. There won't be any. Ava looked at her in confusion. When she was about to say something, Madeline suddenly held her hand. Ava, don't tell anyone about this. Especially, Jeremy. Madeline, are you insane? Do you want to kill yourself for the child? 
Ava stood up emotionally. However, just as she was about to yell at Madeline, her phone's custom ringtone rang. Madeline was stunned. She looked at the caller ID and answered after a few seconds. Jeremy's was heard from the other end of the phone. Madeline, are you doing this on purpose? The man's accusations confused Madeline. If I don't see you in the house in half an hour, you can forget about showing up ever again. Madeline finally remembered what Jeremy had told her the night before. Today was his mother's 50th birthday. She had to go over as his wife. When she was about to agree, Ava snatched her phone away. Jeremy Whitman, is this how a husband should behave? Don't you know that your wife is? Madeline was scared that Ava would tell him about the tumor, so she snatched back the phone. I'll go over right now. After she said that, she hung up the phone. She did not dare waste another second. Ava was resentful toward Madeline for failing to meet her expectations. However, she had no choice. Before she sent Madeline into the cab, Ava reminded Madeline very sternly to take care of herself. Madeline nodded in agreement. When Madeline arrived at Whitman Manor, the party had already started. A lot of nicely dressed socialites and wealthy women could be seen chatting in the garden. Since Madeline had come straight from the hospital, she was wearing a casual, gray outfit. She looked like she was from another world. Thus, she lowered her head. Just as she was about to look for Jeremy, a woman turned around and bumped into her. The wine splashed out from the woman's glass as she was passing by. My dress, the woman exclaimed. She glared at Madeline angrily. Can't you watch where you're going? Are you blind? How can the Whitmans have such an insensible maid like you?